Hi, this is Alex Rohde, W3JAG with National Defense Studies. Today we're going to talk about earthquake detectors. But first, let's talk a little about earthquakes and how earthquake detectors work. Come with me. Earthquakes are responsible for some of the most deadly natural disasters in history, killing millions of people. Countries such as Mexico, Japan, and Taiwan are spending millions of dollars in developing the advanced technologies required to implement a reliable earthquake early warning system. So what causes earthquakes, and is there anything we can do to protect ourselves, even if we don't have access to an expensive national system? The Earth is composed of massive rock systems called tectonic plates, which are always moving, sometimes away from each other and sometimes toward each other. This strains the edges between the plates, eventually causing the rock to break and release powerful energy called seismic waves. There are different kinds of seismic waves, but it is the P waves that are most important for our purposes. This is because P waves, while not as powerful as the other seismic waves, travel the fastest and are therefore the first to be felt. Earthquake detectors sense the presence of the P waves and sound an alarm warning people to take cover before the more powerful earthquake hits. Let's take a look at a sample of inexpensive earthquake detectors currently available on the market. Okay, today we're going to look at um, three different types of earthquake sensors, earthquake detectors, uh, and these three are motion detectors uh, that are designed to sense the arrival of the P wave. The first earthquake detector we're going to look at is manufactured in China and goes for about $39, and it is called an earthquake detector. So let's unwrap it and take a look at it. Instructions came with the earthquake detector, um, but were a little hard to follow. I had uh, took a little intuition and a little guesswork. So here is our earthquake detector. On the back, when you unwrap it, there are two Velcro strips that you would take the plastic off so you can attach it to the wall. And then there's this little plastic stabilizer that holds the pendulum in place during shipping. So now that's done and you can see that the pendulum is now moving freely. Okay, the second device we're going to look at is called a quake alarm. And uh, it also is a motion sensor and runs on a 9 volt battery. So let's unpack it and take a look at it. The quake alarm comes with a booklet of instructions and is much easier to follow than the earthquake detector. Uh, for example, where I had to figure out what that little plastic thing was in the back of the earthquake detector, uh, on the first page of the instructions on the inside cover it tells you what it is and how to remove it. So, big difference. So the quake alarm is uh, out of its package and uh, looking at the back it is very similar to the first earthquake detector we looked at. It has the two um, adhesive strips and it's got this little stabilizer in the back that needs to come off. Let me go ahead and take that off. Finally, uh, the last product we're going to look at is called the earthquake alert and it looks like a big smiley face. So um, different layout than the first two detectors. So let's take a look at it. Let's take it out of the packaging. All right, the earthquake alert comes with its own batteries, unlike uh, the first two detectors we looked at, and it takes two AAA batteries. It's got uh, an installation tape, um, a screw to secure it in the wall. It does not come with a separate set of instructions, but there are simple instructions that are on the side panel of the box. So let's give it a try and see how easy it is to work. The back of the uh, detector has uh, some two panels, one of which has like a wire that's twisted that holds it secure. I'm assuming that we unwrap that. It's not part of the instructions, but let's unwrap it and see what we find. All right, I'm jiggling it and something's moving on the inside, which says to me this is probably the stabilizer 
and there's probably a pendulum-like object on the inside, although we can't see it. So when we remove this wire, it's going to free up the pendulum to move um, the way it's supposed to move uh, in, if there is motion. So let's take it out and see what happens. Okay, I wiggled and finally got that wire off from between the two holes. I hope I did the right thing because there's no instructions again. All right, now next door to it is another panel that looks like it's the size of two AAA batteries. So I'm assuming that's where that goes because, again, that's not part of the instructions. Unfortunately, it takes a tiny screwdriver to open up that little um, latch. So let's give it a try and see if I can find a screwdriver tiny enough to do that. So I've uh, attached the earthquake detector to um, a wall in my house. The heart of this detector is a pendulum that, uh, I don't know if you can see it, it's inside that little window. The pendulum has a forward-back motion and a side-to-side -side motion. So to make sure that it is neither too far to the left or to the right, you need to actually reposition this if it's not right. Slowly move it either left or right until that line is directly lined up with the triangular contact. Um, and again, that's down here below. You can see it when you look inside. Now, the sensitivity screw is this. And it can make the, sensi um, the motion detector either sense more or less motion. So what it does is it moves the pendulum either forward or back. Um, increasing or decreasing um, the sensitivity to motion and also the number of times that the alarm will go off. And obviously the more sensitive you make the alarm the more the alarm is going to go off. Once you have adjusted it uh, you put in the 9 volt battery which goes right up here. Let me go ahead and do that. Alright, battery cover is now closed and we have a fully installed earthquake detector. For the purposes of testing this, I, I had it on the wall. I tried pounding. It didn't set off, but as soon as I took it off, and because it's a motion detector, it, uh, you can hear the alarm go off. All right, so that's our first motion detector. All right, here we have it. I've mounted it to the wall. Uh, my first impression is this one's a lot easier to work with than the first one because uh, the window, although you can't see it really that easily here, is a lot more visible and the pendulum uh, positioning is just easier because you can see more of where the pendulum should be lining up. Um, so I've lined up the pendulum so it's not too far to the left or to the right and again there's a sensitivity knob right here uh, that'll move it back and forward so that you can either make it more or less sensitive to the motions around it. Okay, I have the battery there, and it would mount inside, obviously, but I'm just leaving it out for now. Uh, but you would tuck it in. Oh, see, already the, uh, you can hear the alarm going off. Um, all right, so now what I'm doing is I've got it set up, and I've got the little sensitivity thing here, but what I wanted to do, this one is very sensitive. It's not, this can be adjusted from very sensitive to very non-sensitive, depending on your location, um, if you, uh, um, you know, depending on how worried you are, concerned you are, if you want to feel even the slightest quake, make it more sensitive. If you don't want to, if you have pretty regular subtle quakes but not dangerous quakes in your area, then you maybe want to make it less sensitive. So it only picks up the really strong currents. Okay, the instructions uh, say that there is a um, bead of water you can't see it too well, on the top, yeah, there it is, on the top of the device. And that bead of water needs to be centered inside of a circle, uh, which is probably what centers whatever mechanism is inside so that it um, uh, suspends and, and any shaking would rock it back and forth and trigger the alarm. It does not have a sensitivity um, setting. Uh, but it just has, it does have an on-off setting, which the first two detectors did not. The first two detectors, um, it, the sound kept going until the pendulum righted itself and the motion stopped. This one we're just going to turn it on and see what happens. All right, so the other thing it's got that the first two didn't have is a light. 
Um, in the front of it, there are LED lights. So let's hit the wall and see what happens. There you go. And that sound will keep going. Oh, okay. So it goes a couple of seconds. Let's hit the wall again and see what happens. Let's hit it a little lighter and see what happens. Okay, so that's not going to be enough to set it off a little harder. Hmm. That's odd. How hard do you have to hit it? Let's try it again. Hmm. There it is. Okay, so it goes on for maybe two or three seconds and then shuts off. I'm going to try one more time, and it's a lot louder. If you can tell, that siren is a lot louder than the first two sirens, but you don't need much to wake you, uh, although this one does come with light, so that's helpful too. So let's try it one more time and see if we can get this to go off in a heart. It has to go. Okay, so we're going to hit it one more time. No. No. Hmm. Well, that's pretty darn hard. It says to me this is not very sensitive. My caution here is that uh, the, uh, the manufacturers of these alarms don't warrant their use uh, during an earthquake. They're not going to guarantee that it's going to tell you every time an earthquake comes or that it's not going to sound an alarm even when there isn't an earthquake. And certainly I don't make a warranty because I don't make these things and I'm not uh, promoting one over another. I'm just telling you what I as a consumer see as some of the pluses and minuses um, if I were to use one over another. So anyway, but you make your own judgments. So anyway, that's all for today. Thanks so much for joining me. Remember, it's always better to be prepared. This is Alex Rohde saying, see you next time.